I'm Bob Miller, Color Services Manager here at IT Supplies. And today we're going to talk about a powerful tool that Epson now has you download with your driver for the P and T series printers. The tool I'm talking about is Epson's new media installer. Let's take a look. Epson's Media Installer is one tool that you will need to check out if you are planning to use new or third-party medias. Let's jump onto my desktop to see how this software works. First thing you're gonna notice is at the top, you have Media Management and Media Downloads. If you don't see a particular Epson media type, you should jump over to Media Downloads where you'll be able to download the latest and greatest EMX files from Epson. Uh, you'll also be able to see in the media download section uh, if updates are available for your particular printer. Um, so if there are, you can go ahead and download those here. If we jump back to media management, uh, there are some things that you'll want to know. So, um, so with these particular medias, uh, if you want to make any adjustments or any changes, you're going to want to duplicate them first. So, so if you're printing on, let's just say, Epson Premium Luster, uh, make sure you have the right printer selected. You can go ahead and you can click Copy Media. When we copy the media, it's going to automatically register the media and allow you to make changes to that particular media setting. This will become critical as we talk about third-party medias coming up in the next few moments. So, um, so just keep that in mind. So here you can see the copy is available um, and it's registered. It is editable and removable. So, um, so Epson doesn't want you touching their base media settings. So anytime you want to make changes, you'll always need to make copies to the EMX file. This also goes for EMX files that you download from manufacturers. Um, let me just quickly show you, I'm gonna jump to another tab here, and I'm gonna show you, we have, for example, Hanemule site for the 7570. Um, so here you can see they have ICC profiles and EMX settings. So the EMX settings, and you're gonna see this in a second, is going to determine a lot of the the hardware configuration behind the media. So, um, and then the profile is just that. It's the profile for that particular media. Um, EMX is what's provided by the manufacturer. So whether it's Epson or Hanemule, that's how the files are going to come in. The, if it's Epson, you go to the download section. If it's Hanemule or another third party media, you're gonna go ahead and go to the media management area and to import. This is where you'll be able to import EMX records. Once again, EMX records are those records that are not editable. If you wanna make changes to the record, that's what we're going to do now. And this is the critical piece that I want you to pay attention to. So we go and we, we pick our copy right now. We just copied premium Epson Luster paper. Now we want to go ahead and edit that. Okay, so let's just say that this is a third party media and the foundation, because we know it's Luster and it has similar specifications to an Epson Premium Luster, the foundation that we're going to use is an Epson Premium Luster. But I'm just going to call this third party Luster. Okay, so that'll be the name that we're going to use. Then you wanna look at your media type. So we have photo. Um, so photo is going to use the photo black. Um, we also have matte paper. That is going to use the matte black. Proofing, for example, is going to use the CMYK profiles. Um, so you wanna understand the difference between these different settings. So, um, the next thing that will happen is uh, you'll want to adjust the platen gap. Now, in most cases, the platen gap is going to be fine uh, if you're selecting a similar type of media. 
but things that you want to know is that if you are if your media is 0.2 millimeters to 0.3 millimeters the platen gap is typically going to be around 1.6 if it's 0.3 to 0.34 you're going to be around 2.1 and if it's 0.35 to 0.8 millimeters you're going to be around uh, 2. Point, uh, 2.4 so um, the next thing that we want to talk about is drying time that is typically left to zero unless you're seeing that your prints are are wet coming off the printer and you do need additional drying time you can actually adjust that yourself for the roll tension um, the the roll tension uh, we want to leave that pretty much the way it is um, it's based on the thickness. 0.2 to 0.44 millimeters is stand for standard media, and 0.45 to 0.8, you're going to want to use high. So, um, so that's key. Uh, when it comes to suction, um, we want to think about it in terms of the thickness of the media as well. 0.2 to 0.3 your suction is going to be zero. For 0.31 to 0.44 millimeters, your suction is going to be one. And for, for 0.45 to 0.8 millimeters, your suction is going to be two. And again, that's related to the thickness of the media to ensure that the, the vacuum is strong enough to pull that media tight. Uh, so. That's, that's why you want to make those changes. So if you ever are having problems with curled media and stuff, you can jump into this and actually change it. So these are suggested settings, but if you had really curled media, you could certainly move it um, higher. So uh, to make sure that the media sits flat. Um, so typically you'll want to uncheck this skew reduction area. Um, it just gives you skew warnings, but so if you are on a rolled media that's that's long and you're gonna print long prints, you, you may wanna check it, but otherwise uh, it is going to just pop up warnings periodically if there is an excessive skew. Um, now we're gonna talk about uh, the top and bottom margins. So um, for the top margin for your medias um, that are 0.3 to 0.39 millimeters, you can set this to 20, um, typically. So, and for medias that are 0.4 to 0.8 millimeters thick, you're gonna wanna move more toward uh, 45 uh, the 45 millimeter setting. So um, as far as the bottom margin, I would probably just leave that to the default. Um, you're also gonna wanna uncheck your lateral feed adjustment. Uh, usually that's uh, not necessary. Um, and then um, your margin between pages, usually that we just go ahead and leave that um, where it is. Auto cut, that is your choice. The thicker the media, especially if it's canvas and stuff, you may wanna just take it easy on the blade and you may tell it not to auto cut. Um, one thing to note is this paper eject roller. Typically, you want to leave that on. However, if you are seeing like a star wheel mark on your media, go ahead and turn this off. Um, so that, that's one thing that you do want to check. Um, the paper feed offsets, typically you don't need to make any adjustment here. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily worry about it. Your core diameter, you do want to make sure that that is correct. And, uh, and, so, and then finally, down here at the bottom, you're going to see profiles. If you're, most of the time you're going to be printing using RGB profiles. So that's the one you particularly want to pay attention to and make sure you have the correct profile here. Like I showed you on Hanamule's site, the profiles were stored separately. So you can download those and then you can browse and install them here. 
The CMYK profile will be used mostly for proofing, um, but uh, if you have questions about this or any profile or you need a custom profile, please be sure to reach out to IT Supplies. We do offer these services. We can come on site, we can build profiles uh, remotely by sending you charts and having you send them in. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we can do. So please keep that in mind and reach out to us if you need to. The last thing that I am going to want to talk about here um, is uh, RIPS. Uh, this particular software is compatible with most of the common RIPS out there, for example, Onyx and others. If you have questions about this, please reach out to us. The first thing that you need to know is that you need to have the media setting here in order to have it appear inside of your RIP. Each RIP is different and where you go to is uh, specific to each different RIP to make sure that it sees these. Again, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact us at IT Supplies. We will help you uh, find out where this is and make sure that you can do this. That's it. I hope that our viewers take the time to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And when it comes to printing and color management, IT Supplies is here to help your business succeed.